But we're going to say hello to CBS 2's Tim McNicholas, who's live in Chinatown with the Hochul campaign. Oh, there, there's our panel, and there it goes. It, it looked like there was early numbers, Tim. We were showing Hochul with a, a lead, but early numbers, probably a lot of numbers from downstate. We're not quite sure right now. But there's some cheering going on, Tim. What can you tell us? That's right, Dick. This room is starting to fill in with hundreds of New York Democrats. We're talking about constituents, staffers, senators, all of them wondering whether Governor Kathy Hochul will deliver a victory speech or a concession speech here tonight. Now, the governor is still a front runner in this deep blue state where she has put abortion rights front and center in her campaign. But polls showed Republican Congressman Lee Zeldin had closed the gap in this race over the past couple weeks as he has hammered the governor on public safety. By 6 o'clock today, 1.4 million New York City residents had voted, the second most ever in a gubernatorial election. Earlier, we asked Senator Kirsten Gillibrand for her thoughts on this tight race. So will tonight be a nail-biter? You know, I do think a lot of these elections will go down to the wire, but I feel positive. I feel like our voters understood what's at stake in this election and worked really hard. We also know that New York Attorney General Letitia James is here right now, along with all the most prominent Democrats in New York. As for the governor, I've been in touch with her campaign. I'm told that she is currently watching these results come in with her family, and now it's still early. You can't stress that enough. It is still early, but this campaign spokesperson tells me the governor feels good about the early tallies that are in for the, the ballots that have already been tallied. But again, very early in the night, very early to really make any kind of distinction about who the, who the winner might be at this point, Dick. And Tim, maybe we could take a look at that panel one more time. Uh, are you getting a sense? Obviously, there have been a few people speaking there. Uh, are you getting any sense from the people who are speaking? Let's look at the numbers, actually. They just came up again. This has with 32 precincts reporting. That's not insignificant, 32 percent. Hochul has 65 percent. Lee Zeldin has 35 percent. We should mention, though, that the New York City voting usually comes in first. And obviously, Hochul would do well in that voting. Zeldin would do better upstate. So just in general, we can say these numbers are a bit early, but 32 percent is not insignificant. Anyway, um, right now we're going to move on. We're going to move on to Lee Zeldin's campaign. And Tim, thank you very much. And we'll be getting back to you. Jessica Moore, in the meantime, is standing by live at, I believe, Cipriani. Jessica got the plum assignment at Cipriani for the Lee Zeldin campaign. Uh, Jessica, how's it going right now? Plum for the hundreds of people inside the room. Not not quite as plum for us, but hey, we'll, we'll get our we'll get our due in a little bit. But Dick, I have to tell you, the drinks are flowing, the excitement is building. Supporters who not that long ago thought a Republican victory was unattainable, unthinkable, now believe they can win. Team Zeldin tells me they know this is going to be a close race. There's no question about it. But they say, based on those poll questions, based on a lot of anecdotal evidence, the things that New York voters care about are crime and the economy, and they believe that the congressman is the man. Man to sit in the governor's mansion and make sure that those things get better. That's why his tagline is Save Our State. I spoke with a liaison just a few minutes ago for the Latino community who says he knows a lot of people within the Latino community who are registered Democrats who actually voted Republican in this election because of the crime wave that is hitting the city. Let's take a listen. They are mobilizing because uh, the, the security, they're looking at what's happening with the crime, and many of them are just so worried. You've seen some Democrats switching over to Republican because of that yeah. reason. Mostly Democrats in the Bronx and Manhattan have been switching over because they want a difference and not only security, but they want uh, so much more. And Lee Zeldin has come into our neighborhood. He came into a town hall that I was able to uh, spearhead. They're loving it. So they say, wow, first time a Republican came into our neighborhood. So that means a lot. And we know that city vote is so important for a Zeldin victory. He himself has said he needs a little bit more than a third of the New York City vote in order to win. We heard a few minutes ago also from City Council member Ina Vertikoff. She told the crowd to eat, drink, and be merry. She's definitely feeling optimistic despite those early poll numbers showing Governor Hochul ahead with that 32 percent of the precincts reporting. Governor Zeldin, we heard, just wrapped up an event on Long Island about 30 minutes ago. He is on his way here to Cipriani now. Of course, it will be a, a raucous crowd waiting to greet him, as we've seen at all of his campaign rallies throughout this season. And, and I also should mention, you know, the last Republican to win the governorship was George Pataki, of course, 20 years ago when he was elected to a third term. He's actually at a hotel right across the street, and the Zeldin team is telling me they really hope that he comes over to celebrate what, what will be, in their minds, hopefully, the next Republican victory. Dick? 
it's all in their minds right now. Other than that, you got to have the, the rest of the votes to come in. But Jessica Moore, thank you so much. We will be checking. That's half, the, that's half the battle yeah. in, in, these, in these elections. You know, you got to have that that momentum. That mo momentum until it stops. We shall see. Jessica, thank you very much.